Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today, I'm going to show you how to set up uh, auto crafting in Applied Energy 6.2 for non-crafting grid items. This could be something like flow crystals in my last tutorial, or something like something through the alloy smelter from Ender.io. It doesn't matter what it is, but I'm going to show you the basic type of auto crafting for it. To do this, you're going to need the Applied Energy 6.2 mod, which you probably should have if you're watching this video and you're going to need a working emmy system another thing is you're going to need a craft at least one crafting cpu uh, to run this so if you've been watching my video on um, how to build uh, your first emmy system then you're going to remember me building this and you you should have a crafting cpu if not you need to go and watch that and build a crafting cpu because um you need uh, for auto crafting you need time for that so on to the next thing See that you've got your CPU, you've got everything. To do this, you're going to need one ME input bus. I would recommend two ME interfaces um, for more patterns, especially with an alloy smelter, as you're going to probably run out of available, uh, as you're going to need quite a lot of patterns, as this is very nice. Alloy smelters have um, a lot of uses. Like in my single player world, I already, uh, I've already used up two ME interfaces, and I'm probably going to get a third one on it. So, yeah. so uh, then you're also going to need one ME input bus with, I would recommend, four acceleration cards inside. And so yeah. then you're going to need the alloy smelter. Any, this, uh, I'm going to be using an alloy smelter as an example. You can use any machine. It doesn't really matter. Then in the bottom, because this is an alloy smelter, you need um, an RF source. And let's just quickly get a uh, octatic capacitor. So then um, that should charge up. So to set up auto crafting for a machine like this, you have to go into your pattern terminal. You then have to um, make sure this is on the furnace, which is processing pattern. You get that by clicking crafting pattern. You then set up the um, the atom you want to craft. So to set it up, say you want an energetic alloy, you have to put one energetic alloy there, and then each of the materials there. If you you have to get exactly the right amount for it to um, craft this uh, or for, uh, otherwise the uh, game will glitch out and maybe if you have two gold there it will give it two gold ingots and then the machine will glitch out and stuff so, yeah, so that's how it works um once you've set up the pattern you can press encode this works for anything maybe for a resonator uh any different thing you just put the input and then the output if since it's something like a machine for mechanism which uses maybe like so if if you guys are familiar with mechanism or oh, what's that weird visual glitch see with i'm holding the item it's like duplicated that's so weird oh infinity arm is weird oh that's sick sorry just because i got distracted from it if you guys know the mod mechanism that basically adds um it's got this weird thing where in some of the recipes is it uses like redstone as fuel for it it uses rf and redstone as fuel um and so um uh this is like 10 redstone you i don't think you can get the redstone being auto crafted into it you just have to have an export bus to add the redstone manually or to add the redstone separately so uh, apart from that um you add the uh the items in and then the items out so now once you've got your pattern you bring it over, you then uh, get, you go to your e either ME interface, and you put the pattern in. Um, now, that should then, if it's connected to a working ME system, it should now show it up, saying energetic alloy ingot, which is now shown up. So that means, um, when you uh, want to autograph that, it will take the items out of the ME system, uh, put them into the alloy smelter. If the alloy smelter is working, e.g. it's got RF and um, has a capacitor, uh, then it will auto graft it, and um, and then be uh, ex uh, then be imported into the ME system. If you um, see up, I would recommend don't put anything in the slot, as you're going to have um, as if you're because uh, you're going to have way more than nine different things you want to craft, and there's there's not really any point of putting anything in the slot. See up. So that's how to set up auto crafting for a machine. Um, as you see, it's, this is probably going to go way too fast, so I'm going to swap it out for a basic capacitor. So you guys, uh, so we, I might be able to uh, see. So if I just want to quickly craft. As you see, it crafts it. It takes the items, puts it into the um, enhanced alloy smelter, crafts it. 
uh, it then then it gets taken out as you sort of flash it through, and then now we have an energetic alloy ingot. So that is how the that is how to set water crafting for it. If you want to have a large scale amount of water crafting, um, I've got a special pattern design which I'll show you now. Um, if you want to like have a wall of water craftable things, because one of the biggest issues I found with auto crafting is you set it up and as you need a bunch of cables connecting to it, you then can't really, it's really hard to access the machine once it's been set up with auto crafting. So um, I'm just going to show you a how I like to set up my machines so you can still access them for um, to use them normally. So if I just get out a dense cable, where is it? Where's a dense cable? Is that it? No. Any dense, sorry. Um, and I'll just show you what I would, uh, how I would normally set it up. So you, I would like, so normally I would have it so the channels are, because you normally need a lot of channels when you're setting up. Um, wait, is this black? Oh, I'm being an idiot. Sorry. Where's the flux? Dense cable flux. Oh, I was just being blind. Sorry. Um, let's see up. So I like to have it. Uh, where is it? Is this the right color? connected like that and then um connected like that make sure it's not touching the crafting cpu or anything um and then i like to have it effectively in this in this design so you've got the uh import bus on the back of it and then the interface on either side and then um because that uses three channels per item you can have like two items and then say that you need to um then say that you want to have three machines in a row like I don't have only two machines e uh, each side. Um, what I've what I've found you can do is, as that uses nine channels, um, if you get an anchor, this item is cable anchor. This basically stops the cable connecting, and so um, if you put uh, one there, you can then have it like this, and then um, continue continue this pattern. So you can continue having with like your Emmy interface and your interfaces. That basically means if there's if it's then say that connected like by a, a dense cable here, um, and say that it's brought along, let's just bring this cable along. Um, it now means even so it's not directly connected here, it will still uh, the machine has say that we've got an alloy smelter, it'll still um, auto craft all the items perfectly fine. But it allows you to have uh, eight channels along here because with this design, um, you can't have dense semi cables because it doesn't work because you have to have it connecting to the you can't a dense cable doesn't connect to an emmy interface or an import bar sadly see so, yep. i hope this tutorial helped and yeah i hope your emmy systems are going well if you've got any questions or it's not working just um join my discord server and let and ping me or something let me know uh, or you can just comment on this uh video and i'll try and respond as well so bye have fun hope to see you in another episode bye